Can you install a gas boiler in a loft? Well, the quick answer to that is yes, but there's always a but, isn't there? Let's get on with it and find out exactly what are the rules and regulations you must follow when installing or having installed a gas boiler in a loft. Now, first of all, we've got access. So, if you are putting a boiler in the loft, you can't be going up and down in the loft with one of these rickety wooden ladders. It has to be a fixed ladder. Now, what can this ladder be made of? Well, there's loads of different loft um, ladders. The worst one are those aluminium ones, you know, the rickety ones. They're not good because these ladders have to be able to hold the weight of a gas engineer going up and down there. And also for your safety too, if you're the homeowner. Now, also on the access, the ladders will need a handrail so you can go up and down. Remember, three points of contact at all times when you're going up a ladder. But if you haven't got handrails going up the side of the ladder, then the hole in the ceiling, the hatch here, you will need to be able to put a barrier around there to stop anybody falling down it. And the barrier needs to be at least a meter up and at least on three sides. So things to think about before you actually go into the loft and put your boiler in there is access. Insufficient access, even if you've had your boiler already installed in there, could stop a gas engineer actually going up into the loft and servicing or repairing your boiler because they feel unsafe. Now, as well as access, <laughs> which is very good in this loft, we also need a permanently fixed lights working off a light switch. Which does work in my favour here. That's about the only thing. Now the next thing is walking up to the boiler. Now, if I had a boiler installed right down at the bottom of my bungalow, I would have to have a fixed walkway all the way down to the boiler and around the boiler. Now, how wide does this need to be? Well, if you are less than a metre, with a walkway, it will need handrails all the way down the side on both sides as well. This isn't just to stop the engineer falling off the walkway. This could also stop stuff you stored in the loft falling on the engineer. And again, if you've not gone right the way across, then you'll need, could even need to put handrails around where the boiler is. So access to the boiler is key because it's not just the safety of the owner, the homeowner, it's the safety of the gas engineer going to service, repair or install the boiler. One thing you wouldn't want them is them crashing through the ceiling. And as you can see here, even though I do have a walkway going all the way down to the bottom, of this loft there's big spaces missing like this one here and there's some dodgy bits down there as well and there's no handrails or anything so it's a big con when you're putting a boiler in the loft is the amount of money it's going to cost to get it ready to put the boiler in there now this isn't the responsibility of the gas engineer to do this this is the responsibility of the homeowner to have this all prepared before the engineer actually comes on site. But there's more about the walkway. Now, in a lot of houses, unlike here, 
<laughs> where my loft insulation does just come up to uh, the rafters. A lot of them have another 75 mil on the top, over the top of the rafters. That means the boarding will have to float over the top of the insulation. So you can buy these little legs to stand the boarding on on top of the rafters so you're not squashing down the insulation so that could be even more cost in installing a boiler in the loft is just the amount of money it's going to cost you in wood now one of my biggest pet hates with installations of boilers in the loft is the pipe work when the engineer runs them directly in front of the boiler like this one. You end up standing on it and falling over it when you're trying to repair or service the boiler. All it needs is a little thought and just end up running the pipe around the sides leaving the front clear so you're not tripping over the pipe so you don't damage the pipe and so you don't damage your neck. Other things is the gas pipe going up to this boiler one of the things you can't do with a gas pipe is put it in an unventilated void a loft could be classed as an unventilated void if we've got breathable um, membrane on the top here now we've got like it's like a plastic bag <laughs> it's not fell it's I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's breathable or whether it's not. Put in the comments down below, guys, if you know that this whether this is breathable or not. But we have ventilated soffits outside there, which would be required if you do have this membrane on the top underneath your slates. So there's another plus. We do have ventilated um, soffits. Now... The gas pipe, you cannot lay it underneath the insulation. It has to be above the insulation. So try and bring it the shortest route as possible into the loft. Now, a lot of engineers, what they do is run the gas pipe up the outside of the house, straight through underneath the boiler. Tickety-boo, jobs are good and looks horrendous, and it's open for theft, but it is a way of getting over the regulations about putting a gas pipe into an unventilated area. Now, if it is unventilated and you can't get over that, then you must put ventilation in and you will require 50 centimeters squared of ventilation into the loft near the boiler. Don't put it too close though, because that freezing air coming into the loft could actually freeze your boiler. We'll look at freezing boilers in a minute. Now, like I have here LPG, so if I was to put my boiler in here and my soffits weren't ventilated, then I would have to put a vent 50 centimeters squared low down. But if it's natural gas, then I would have to put it high up. Other things to think about, is the actual height you've got now you can see <laughs> i'm six foot two and i ain't got no way of standing up in here <laughs> i can't even kneel up so there's no chance in hell that i am going to get a boiler in here to the correct manufacturer's instructions because on a boiler you will require an area above the boiler for servicing and an area below the boiler It'd have to be a pretty small boiler in this house to actually get it in. Even if I was going vertically through the roof. I've got two gable ends because we're a detached bungalow. Now, fixing the boiler to the wall. This is Thermalite block. It's not fantastic for fixing a heavy boiler on there. But I could make a framework here in between the wood. But if I did make a framework in between the wood, that's got rules and regulations as well. The main one being, obviously, it has to hold the weight of the boiler, including when it's full of water. And then the next one, which most people don't realise, is if there is combustible material below where the boiler is attached. So I would be making a framework here out of wood probably sitting it on a piece of wood 
I would have to make that bottom part of the platform non-combustible and at least 12 millimeters thick. Pretty much like a half is for a fire, but anyway. Oh. So it's getting even more expensive to put an actual boiler into this loft. Now, the lofts in winter, as we are now, we've got a storm raging outside. So if you can hear the storm, I'm sorry. They're freezing cold in winter, aren't they, lofts? So all your pipe work will need to be insulated and the boiler will have to be protected from frost damage. Now, if I was installing a boiler in a loft, I wouldn't be relying on the internal frost stat of the boiler. I would actually be fitting a frost stat. Now, the only problem with that is the boiler is going to be running virtually all winter, especially where I live on the top of the hill in the middle of nowhere. Same goes for a garage as well. If you put a boiler in a garage, you should be putting a frost stat in that as well. So your boiler could be coming on when you don't want it coming on. So it's not looking good putting a boiler in a loft, is it? So let's actually have a look at some of the pros for installing a boiler in a loft rather than the cons. Now, probably the biggest pro for installing your boiler in the loft is space. No cupboards in our house are taken up with a boiler. Not in the kitchen anyway. It's in Will's bedroom. Anyway, so that's a big uh, a plus. Also, you've not got any unsightly pipe work going up the side of a boiler or underneath a boiler. You've got none of that. You've also got very little noise. So our boiler is in Will's bedroom and boilers are quite noisy, but when it's in the loft, you don't hear it. So they're probably the main pluses, pros, for having a boiler in a loft. There's quite a few more cons though. Not many people think about this though, it's water pressure. Because a lot of the time, especially in houses, two, three storey houses, your water pressure could be absolutely pants by the time it gets into your loft. So put your boiler near your kitchen sink, you've got great water pressure, put it in your loft, you could actually have rubbish hot water coming out of your taps. And obviously we've looked at some of the other major ones, major one being in a cold area, it can cause numerous problems. Now, if you do have a boiler in the loft, the gas, water and electric has to be able to be isolated from outside the loft. Now, technically, if you think about it, you can isolate your gas at your ECV. You can turn your water off at the stop tap. If you've got a combi. We are talking about combis though. Uh, you just need to think about isolating your electrics. So a few spur on the landing, which just feeds your boiler. But what about topping your boiler up? So if your boiler loses pressure for any reason, that means you're going to go up in the loft to top it up. So one of the best things to do if you do have a boiler in the loft or you're going to put a boiler in the loft, make sure you've got access to a filling loop from outside the loft with a pressure gauge so you know exactly how much water and pressure you are putting into your central heating system. Now we've looked at accessibility, we've looked at the pros and cons for installing the boiler in the loft. What about the flu system? So the flu system is going to be a concentric flu system, so a flu inside a flu going either straight out through the gable end or going through the roof. So let's have a look at the regulations on that then. Now let's have a look at these flues going vertically through a pitched roof. Now you can find all this information in BS 5440 part 1. Now VLUX windows or roof lights or opening roof windows. We have a shaded area around the window where you cannot install the flue system. This is actually the same as an open flue boiler. 
which we can't install anymore, so it still applies to room sealed. So if you try to install a flue down here at the bottom, you must be more than two meters away from the opening. And down the side and the top is 600. So we have this red area where we are not allowed to install a boiler. So A, B and C are all 600 and D down here is two meters. Now, if you are going straight out of the roof and there's no openings, so there's no VLUX windows or anything, the flue pretty much tells you what you've got to be. So it's really, really hard to install vertical flues wrong. But as you can see from this picture here, the one on the left is installed perfectly, but the one on the right, now you've got white showing, it's not down on the seal, it's just a incorrectly installed flu. But for the regulation from 5440 part one is from the back of the flu, so this is underneath the terminal section, you need 300 mil. You need at least 300 mil at the front. And if you go over the ridge, you need to be higher than 300. So that's what it is if you go in straight up. Now, before condensing boilers came along, this was kind of coming common when they installing boilers going horizontally through a pitched roof. And then they said you needed to leave 300 mil underneath the flue system. So if any snow gathered on the roof, then it's not going to come into the air inlet and affect the air inlet because the air inlet on the flue is normally at the bottom. But with condensing boilers now being the norm, this isn't a good idea and not many boiler manufacturers actually recommend this as a position for a flue. Especially if you've got a tiled roof and not a slated one because the condensate can drop down and actually start rotting away the tiles. So they don't reckon this now is a recognised way of sticking a flue out through a pitched roof. If you've got any concerns about this, contact the boiler manufacturer from the boiler you're installing, but make sure you get it all in writing that they're allowing you to do this because it's not a preferred method now. Now, another problem we come across when we're installing flues in lofts is if we've got a conservatory down at the bottom going right the way across the house. It could even be a, a pitched um, extension. And you can't get there, or any ladders up there, to get at the flue without putting really expensive scaffolding up and around. They've come out now with a, a product called the Flu Snug. And I think it's an absolutely amazing idea. Um, there are a few manufacturers have kind of nicked the idea. Uh, but Worcester have been doing this for a long time, where you core out a hole of uh, five inches and then you can push your uh, flue through with the seal, rubber seal on the end and pull it back. That's exactly what a flue snug does. So, but you need to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the flue snug. But I know companies like Worcester and Baxi allow you to do this kind of thing. Again, Reading the manufacturer's instructions is key when installing the flues in these lofts. But if you are installing this flue in the loft and you're using extensions, make sure your in extensions are secured and installed to manufacturer's instructions. Most manufacturers want you to uh, secure the flue system at each joint with no more than a meter in between the brackets. Now, British standards say 1.8 metres and every change of direction, but a lot of the boiler manufacturers only give you short lengths of flue system, so you have to secure it at least at the joints. So it's not going to pull apart or drop down when you've got a vertical flue system. So lots to think about 
when you're installing a boiler in a loft. Just a recap, access, cold areas, your gas pipe in an unventilated void and flu systems being installed incorrectly. Anyway, hopefully you've liked the video and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.